There's a lot that goes into designing projections for a production. Sometimes you're choosing projectors to fit the set design in the venue. Sometimes you design the set and the projection surfaces based on the projectors that you have available. If you have a lot of projectors, you might need to plan out the installation of your computers and software and a ton of other stuff. All of this adds up to a lot of hours, but the most time-consuming part of doing projections for a show is creating media. When I'm working in the space during tech, people sometimes come up to me and ask, what software do you use to make all of this? Sometimes they're just kind of interested and they're making conversation, but sometimes I think they're hoping for a short answer that they might make use of. The problem, of course, is that you can end up using a lot of different software along the way while making animated media. Programs share similar functions. We all tend to rely on familiar available tools, too. You might use a 3D modeling program and a really simple video editor for one moment in a show, and then totally different tools for another. Basic video editors have transitions like pan or push that can provide really useful animation. I'm going to walk through some media that I created for a fairly large production of Disney's The Little Mermaid. The production was done in January of 2019 by the Educational Theater Collaborative in New Hampshire. This is a large community theater. They shoot for pretty high production values. They also cast a lot of people. This particular production had upwards of 100 people in it, including a lot of kids. One of the really big numbers of the show is, of course, Under the Sea. Now for this show, we were projecting primarily on the cyclorama upstage, but we were also using the side walls of the theater. When the chorus joined in on that song, dozens and dozens of costumed children swarmed into the house and onto the stage. Projections painted the house walls with the same sort of bubbles and ripples and schools of fish that were already on the cyclorama. Now projections can support really striking original concepts. For this show and this company though, I stuck close to the original Disney theme. The goal with this media was to have it be all original but still look and feel like the universe of the movie that all of these people know and love. My plan in this video is to take apart the media loop that you're looking at right now and see how it was built. First, the background is a stock video clip that I bought on depositphotos.com. There's a number of sites that offer ready-made video clips. Video clips might feel a little pricey when you first look at them. If it's the right clip for the right moment though, they save a lot of time. Now, without the background here, this media would still work, but it wouldn't have the same depth or magic. The next layer to consider is these rotating shafts of light. I built those in a really old version of 3D Studio that I have. I made them glow with a soft edge, and I spun them, and I made this clip. You can find underwater effects that already have that kind of light in them. I already had a clip that I liked with water, so I just layered this over it. Now let's look at these rising bubbles. Something important to know is that every one of these bubbles is the same bubble. The bubbles are all moving in large or small groups. This is carefully set up to loop. The first thing I did was to find a picture of a bubble that I thought was worth imitating. Yeah, this one. It's got a few bright highlights in the upper right area. It's got a few deep shadows that are fuzzy or sharp in different areas. The background color shows through a lot. Let's make one of these. My laziest way to make a circle is to just copy one from Google Images. I don't think anyone holds the copyright on circles yet. I take the circle in the Photoshop. Our goal is to make a transparent PNG file so that the bubble will be see-through. Got to use layers with no background for that. While we're going, to, we're going to color in parts of the bubble to create shadows and highlights, some of it should be blurry. Here, let's put temporary color in the background to see what we're doing better. I'm jumping a little bit ahead so that the highlights and a little texture are complete. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's turn the background color back off. We can merge the visible layers and save this as a PNG file. This is a little different than the one I built for the real show, but it's pretty close. Once we have one bubble, we can make the canvas bigger and make a set of three. With an even bigger canvas, we can copy and paste that bubble all over the place and make a big set of bubbles in one transparent image. I make a small library of different sets of bubbles that I can place in front of that animated background. I'll animate these later on though after I make the fish. It was easy to find clips from the movie. I had no interest in using the exact same fish, but I did want to imitate them. Again, with this many kids involved, my goal was to deliver a very Disney-like product without just copying it. 
I didn't need to make a lot of fish. In our show, the kids themselves were the fish. We just wanted a few. So I made some screenshots from videos I found online. I identified a few fish I liked. These seahorses here were not from Disney. They were from a parody scene on, on The Simpsons. The first thing I did, though, was to draw these three fish. I used AutoCAD for this first step. It's not really intended for this, but it gave me a nice clean drawing and I'm pretty quick with it. Now here, let's add color. And after we color them, we'll copy each fish to its own image file with a background color. Each background color is going to be used later for chroma key effects. Each fish needs a background color that is not used on its body. I want the fish to swim in simple, straight lines. They don't need to turn their bodies, but they do need to sort of undulate as they swim. For this step, I used Adobe Premiere. It's a pretty powerful video editor. I import one of the fish images into Premiere, and I drag it to the timeline. On the effects menu, I locate Wave Warp. I apply this to the image on the timeline. This makes animated ripples flow through the image of the fish in time. In the top left, I adjust the length of the waves to make them longer. I also pin all the image edges so that the ripples do not affect the edge of the image. Now I've got a fish that undulates. I just need to export it as a video clip. I use the export function to export this as an AVI file in this case. I repeat this then for the other two fish. We're working towards being able to put these fish on an animated background. So let's assign a blue chroma key to that yellow fish. Now the seahorse and the blue fish needs a red chroma key. Now we have a bunch of bubbles, a few types of animated fish, and background water effects. Adobe Premiere would be a good tool to put this all together, however, I'm partial to Camtasia Studio for this next step. Camtasia is designed mostly for video blogs and YouTubers and instructional videos. I like it for making projection media because it has a good set of basic editing tools with a really simple interface. It's easy and quick. I'm working in Camtasia right now making this video. I'll clear the screen and build that underwater scene step by step. Let's start with the water background. I place the shafts over the water with 50% transparency. Now add some of those bubble groups. For this demo, I'm putting in four groups on screen. I'm also copying those four groups to a space below the screen in Camtasia. The first four groups will move up off the screen while the second four groups take their place. Now crossfade the background water so that it also starts and stops at the same point. This creates a looping video clip. Let's watch those bubbles rise once. I repeat this with some bubble sets that are scaled up a little larger in the foreground with variations on the background elements and different bubble sets and speeds. I made maybe 10 different versions of bubbles underwater for the show. <clears throat> I even made some black background bubble animations. Using black chroma key, I can drop these in on top of anything that I like. Now we need some fish. Camtasia can remove the background colors and now we just need to make them cross the screen. In Camtasia, we select a fish on the timeline and choose Visual Properties. Arrows appear on the media in the timeline. Place the cursor before the arrow and then again after it. The length of the arrow determines how long the movement lasts. Once the library of bubbles, fish, and backgrounds exists, you can arrange the elements in lots of different ways. You can swap out different backgrounds, add more or fewer bubbles, and copy the fish around. It's easy to flip the fish too so that they face the other direction. This is a lot of process. I'm not advocating that you learn all of this software or these techniques. What I'm advocating is that you develop a small suite of editing tools that you are familiar with and enjoy using. Become fluent with what those tools can do. And when it's time to make media for use on stage, dig in well before tech and start making things. Arrive at tech with a solid library of material to play with. You will always do some editing during tech. You do not want to be building a lot of stuff from scratch then though. If you have a lot of good material already built, it's easy enough to combine or change the timings on things. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful. I publish things like this as often as I can. You can find me on Facebook at Matt Kaiser Design. On Instagram, I'm matt.kaiser.design. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this.